Everybody, welcome. Thank you for being here today. My name is Audrey Burns. I'm an Assistant Dean of Admission at Bates College, and I'm here with some really wonderful folks, some staff members, some current students, and we're all here to talk to you a little bit about purposeful work. What is it? What does it do? How does it help you prepare for what comes after your four years in college? So thank you for students and families here who are already thinking about all the ways that you can set yourself up for success after college, during college, before college. So Thank you, everybody. A little bit about how today's panel will run is that we will do introductions here. We're going to play a short, a short clip to learn a little bit more about the Purposeful Work Center, and then we will answer some questions. Um, but we hope that most of the bulk of this time will be spent answering your questions. So you'll see a Q&A module at the bottom of your screen, um, and you should feel happy and comfortable putting any questions you have about um, career development and opportunities at Bates as they occur to you um, and throughout the session. So start thinking now and we will begin with some introductions. So as I mentioned, I'm Audrey Burns. I'm an assistant dean in the office. I'm also a Bates College alum, which I'm always so proud to say, and I will be your host tonight. Um, so first I am going to kick it over to Nicole to introduce herself. She will be behind the scenes moderating today. Nicole? Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for being here today with us. So yeah, as Audrey mentioned, I'll be moderating the Q&A. So feel free to send any questions our way there. Audrey will be the one bouncing it onto our panelists, but if there are any questions that I could supplement by adding in some links or adding in other information, I will be doing that. Um, and just as a reminder for everyone, uh, we are recording this panel today in hopes of being able to offer it to any folks that missed it, weren't able to join us. So just as a heads up, but thank you all for being here. And now we'll introduce the rest of our panelists. Um, so to get started, we have a couple excellent staff members with us. So I was wondering if both of you could share a little bit about how long you've been at Bates, what your role is here, and what drew you to the college. Um, so wondering, Alan, if you wouldn't mind starting us off. Absolutely. Thank you, Audrey. Um, I'd like to add my voice of welcome to everyone on the call tonight. Um, my name is Alan DeLong and I'm the Senior Associate Dean for Purposeful Work at Bates, which is a really long title to essentially tell you that in terms of purposeful work here at Bates, I'm the director um, for all intents and purposes. I've been at the college for two and a half years. Um, and you'll, over the course of the evening, as we talk about purposeful work at Bates, we'll, use, we'll talk about strengths, interests, and values, um, and how we align those with our work. And one of the, the reason I came, the compelling reason I came to Bates is to work with purposeful work, um, because it aligns with my values, um, my interests in working with college-age students, um, and because it's a relatively new um, initiative at Bates, it allowed me to use some of this professional strengths I have, which are building organizations. Um, so I'm really happy to be here with you tonight. And, um, and I'll spend most of my time talking about purposeful work at the meta level, because we've got two students and a recent alum on the panel. Um, who I think are far more interesting in terms of talking about their experiences with purposeful work um, than I can be. So thank you and again, welcome. Thanks, Alan. Um, my name is Rachel Forcillo and I also work at Purposeful Work um, and I'm a grad of 2018. Um, I am the marketing coordinator and also do graphic design work um, for Purposeful Work. Um, and I, I was a huge like fan of Purposeful Work as a student at Bates um, and did a lot of the programs, including the Job Shadow program, the internship program, um, the Purposeful Work infusion courses, um, and many more things too. Um, and so, when I was graduating and I really wanted to stay in Maine and um, was kind of had done like my own career pivot, I guess you could say, because I was a psych major um, and also really interested in art and then knew that I wanted to go into, um, to do design after Bates. Um, so, and I, I just feel so strongly about purposeful work and 
like the power that it has to help students um, really align their values with their strengths and their interests and then kind of use that as a jumping off point to start their career exploration. Um, so I was so, so happy and I love Bates so much um, and just am really excited to be here with you all tonight. Awesome, thank you both so much. And then we have two students here as well. Um, so wondering if you could both introduce yourselves. Um, let's say your name, where you're from, what your class year is, what you're studying at Bates, and also a little bit about what you like to do and what you're involved in at Bates. Um, so Alicia, would you mind going first? Hi, thank you, Audrey. <clears throat> so, sorry. <clears throat> My name is Alicia, and so I'm a rising junior from Houston, Texas. I'm a current psychology major with two concentrations in queer studies and learning and teaching. And so in addition to the work I do in admissions, I also work in the library and in the math and stats workshop, as well as as a Spark peer mentor. So really serving as a resource for our LGBT plus students on campus. And then some other things I like to do around campus is that I am part of Two Beats, our hip hop dance team on campus, and Latinos Unidos, our Latinx affinity group. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Sean. Thank you, Alicia. Hi, everyone. My name is Sean. I am also a rising junior. I'm from New York City. I'm also a psychology major, and I have a minor in Africana Studies and a guest in theater. Some of the things that I'm involved with on campus, I'm a psychology research assistant. I'm a student assistant to the Africana program. I am a member of Residence Life. I am a member of two committees on campus. One of them has to do with athletics, and one of them has to do with building a leadership framework. I am one of the assistant directors for the upcoming orientation, and I'm also a member of our Black Student Union and our Caribbean Student Association. Awesome. Thank you all so much. So happy to be with you and be in front of a full room talking about purposeful work. Um, so our effort tonight is to understand what is a purposeful work center and why is it so neat, unique setting Bates apart and how we prepare students for what comes next. Um, so in part of doing that, we are going to share just a brief video to kind of ground us into what we're doing. Um, and Nicole, would you mind kicking that off? Yes, absolutely. I came to Bates and I thought, you know, maybe I'll be pre-med and that I just ended up not liking pre-med. And then I had to make a switch after my first semester and that ended up becoming history and Chinese. I've always been interested in language and stories and media and I realized my sophomore year that I wanted to work in games. I'm not at this kind of one track, how do I get there? When I got to Bates, I didn't know I'd be teaching. I didn't know I'd work with kids. I got a taste of what it's like to be a like, student teacher in like a second and third grade classroom, and, and I realized like I really like working with kids. I think Bates is perfect for a student who wants to push their boundaries, who wants to really explore who they are, and what's out there in the world and how the two of those align. Purposeful Work is a Bates program that put Bates students into internships, summer internships, jobs that lead you to what you might want to do in the future, like as your actual career. So I applied to internships in, in China, you know, to better my Mandarin skills. Like everything else that Bates does, I have to come out of my comfort zone again because I'm going to Vietnam. And they speak Vietnamese. Purposeful work is all about giving students experiences through practitioner taught courses or the summer internship experiences or in a vicarious sense through purposeful work infusion classes, getting to know guest speakers who have been in their shoes and going out and doing an internship and saying, you know what, that's not it. Well, that's invaluable knowledge. When I first came to Bates, I had thought one path. I was knocked off that one path and faculty here they picked me up and they basically were telling me, you know, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? Why don't you see this? They're not telling you, you need to do this. You need to do that. The Purpose Work program also instills a confidence in every student at Bates with a liberal arts background to say, because I, I come from this background, I am, if, I'm just as strong, if not stronger, than a lot of the candidates. It makes itself different from other internship programs because it, the critical reflection forces you to grow 
throughout the internship process. And it's a great strength that coming from a liberal arts college, you really can choose any path. Purposeful work program is one of Bates' biggest strengths, I would say, and is the reason that I am here at my job at Nickelodeon. There's this thing with my best friend here that we like to say, we're becoming people. <laughs> it's really notable and exciting to see how students have taken to purposeful work. Excellent. Thank you so much for playing that, Nicole. Um, I think that that video, yes, does such a really good understanding, grounding us in some of the really initial um, uh, enormous facets of the program and just also indicating how widespread it is and how many different options there are uh, living within the Purposeful Work Center. Um, I want to ask Alicia and Sean a little bit about what, um, how they first heard about Purposeful Work, but I don't know, Rachel or Alan, if there was anything else you wanted to say before we, we got going. No? All right, excellent. Um, I do think that that video covers it very well. So um, if anyone has any questions, I do want to remind you that we hope the second half of this will just be answering all of your questions. What are you wondering about? Um, so please feel free to start thinking now and putting those into the Q&A module uh, for Nicole to look through. So to start us off, I would love to hear from both of our students. How did you first hear about purpose work? How did it first cross your path? Um, I don't know, Sean, would you be able to kick us off with that? Yeah, so um, Rachel actually mentioned this, but I was first introduced to Purposeful Work um, through one of my intro to psychology courses, my first semester at Bates, and I took a Purposeful Work infusion course. And so basically we learned about what it means to pursue a job and to get into um, one's career and what it means for a person to be passionate about the job that they're doing and that your job shouldn't be something that's fixed. It should be something that's always changing and in your interest and how to engage in work that is not only meaningful for you as an individual but also for the greater good of society and to not get trapped in a job that you don't want to do that you're not passionate about it's something that you only see yourself doing right now and so it kind of um, actually no it very much altered my um, you know perception of what it means to you know um, be a postgraduate and to engage in a job that it's in that I love and that I want to see myself doing, you know, for the future. And so while I was learning about the foundations of psychology, we were also learning about positive psychology and how one's well-being um, uh, interacts with the job that they're doing, whether that's an internship or an on-campus job, and then further down the line when you're pursuing a career. So that was my first introduction. And then um, I was able to do a job shadow the second semester I was at Bates. Um, I was able to use uh, funding from Purposeful Work to go to uh, Maryland, where I shadowed a Bates alumni. Um, and who was an occupational therapist. I knew that I wanted to go into the field of psychology, but I didn't know which subfield I wanted to pursue. Um, and I knew that occupational uh, therapy wasn't, you know, the field for me, but it was really valuable in knowing that I still do want to pursue psychology, but not on this track. And then this past February, I shadowed a Bates alum and Bates parent again. I went to New Mexico using purposeful work funding, and I was able to um, shadow a, a CEO of a nonprofit organization who works in child protective care and providing psychological services to family um, and also helping them with legal battles and for child custody. And so that really was pivotal for me in figuring out that I do wanna work with adolescents and I do wanna work in, um, in some fields surrounding trauma psychology. So those were really huge interactions that I had with Purposeful Work that helped um, navigate the ways in which I would pursue the field of psychology. I know for me, I think my first interaction with Purpose for Work was because I wanted to pursue some on-campus jobs. And so I was able to go down to the Center for Purpose for Work and work with students in crafting a resume and cover letter, which is something that I had experience in, but definitely not to the extent and with all of the resources and support that's provided with Purpose for Work. And so that was kind of my introduction into just the base, how we can go and get involved in the Purposeful Work Center, um, just like in general. But then as I started taking more courses here at Bates, um, I think I took an education course that revolved around race and cultural pluralism in the American education system. And we actually spoke with a Bates alum named um, Julia Sleeper. And 
she founded an organization called Tree Street Youth. And so she's someone who went to Bates, used the resources here, and actually created an organization that's not too far from Bates, and was talking about the practical ways in which all of the things we were learning about in this class applied into the exact kind of work that she's doing. And for me, I went from someone who didn't even consider pursuing anything in the educational field to hearing about this program and this organization and the path that she took from Bates and understanding. I was like, I think this is almost exactly the kind of thing that I want to do. And so I was able to stay connected with her and pursue an internship that summer. And I worked with Purpose for Work again to get my cover letter, get my resume and help with like interview tips. Like, what am I really going to do to try and pursue this career field? And I was able to get an internship at Tree Street Youth, which just really enhances my um, kind of like value for the education system and what people are doing even outside of the um, main schooling system. So that was just kind of my experience with purposeful work and of how it's really enhanced my learning. Excellent, thank you both so much. You've really kind of taken us on a journey there from how it really started off in your experience um, and where it's led you to there, so thank you. Um, the next question that I wanna ask is just, it's kind of an overarching, but what does purposeful work mean to you? Why is it important? Um, and I think that this is a great question for all of our panelists, or at least Sean, Alicia, Rachel, I'd also like to hear your thoughts on this, um, but wondering if Sean, if you could start us off of course. So I would always talk to like my dad when I was in high school and he was like, my biggest, you know, dream for you is to be in a career, um, not just to have a job, but to have a career and differentiating between the two and doing something that you're passionate about coming from an immigrant household and kind of seeing my parents do jobs that, you know, it makes ends meet, but they're not things that they really want to do. Um, and having that, you know, dream for me to be able to pursue whatever it is that I desire. And so um, learning about purposeful work and not just, you know, internships and jobs, but understanding what the term actually means and being able to, you know, engage in lifelong work that is something that is impactful for you. And like I said, again, like with society, um, it's not just something that it's just like a nine to five, but something that extends beyond that. And so just um, having the opportunity to engage in different courses, having the chance to volunteer within the Lewis and Auburn community, networking with Bates alumni, being able to play around in different fields, having the chance to, you know, study abroad and seeing and understanding that like the field of psychology outside of a Western um, perspective has really allowed me to figure out and kind of check off the boxes of things that I don't want to do in my career. You know, we're not always gonna know going into college what it is that we want to do, but it's sometimes easier to say, okay, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna go down this field. I don't wanna take that class. Um, and having so many interdisciplinary courses has really allowed me to um, kind of create a skeleton of what I wanna do um, after graduation and that's something that not a lot of students get the chance to do even in college you know you end up majoring in something but it's like is this what I actually want to do I mean I got my degree in it so I guess I have to pursue it but the different outlets and avenues that we have at Bates and having purposeful work makes you you know feel that your options are endless and it's having um, you know the abundance of opportunities to really um, play around in different fields, try different classes, try different internships, and also not having that financial burden of, oh, I won't be able to travel here or, or I can't afford to do an unpaid internship. You know, you don't have to worry about that with purposeful work. And so it really has been beneficial to me in figuring out what I want to do post-graduation, but truly just understanding what it means to engage in work that is purposeful to oneself. I know for me, um, Purposeful Work has so many tangible ways in which they've supported me and given me access to all these resources. But I think the biggest thing for me has been this mindset shift that working with Purposeful Work has allowed for me to gain. And I think coming from a low income household, we've always had this dream of like, one day I'm gonna get a really good job so that way I can have a steady income. And that was just kind of the dream always growing up. And as I got older, it felt less and less realistic that I was going to be able to pursue something I was actually passionate about. It felt more like I was focused on, am I going to be able to make ends meet? Am I going to be able to pay the bills? 
And then working with purposeful work really helped me understand that there are so many opportunities that I can pursue and so many fields that I'm interested in. And I'm going to be able to do not only what I'm passionate about, but find really viable career options in these fields, which just didn't seem realistic growing up. And so they've really helped me kind of make my dreams a lot more compatible with reality. And so even if it's something as small as now I see and now I hope that I can pursue something that I'm both passionate about and will also help me have a sustainable lifestyle, I think that's a huge shift from before when it kind of felt like hope wasn't really something I had the privilege to have. It really makes all these opportunities accessible for all students. Yeah, oh, that that resonates so, so strongly. I think um, when I was listening, Sean and Alicia, both to you talk about purposeful work, I feel like the word kind of that I came up with was like freedom. Um, and that's what I think about a lot too with the program um, in the sense that like you can come into Bates, you know, maybe having like a strong idea of what you think you want to do or zero idea of what you want to do any like you were even major in um and Alan always says to first years he's like okay if you know you want to do something or you think you know you want to do something put that on pause hold that thought because college is the time where there are so many opportunities and, and purposeful work has essentially curated these opportunities for you to do that exploration, that testing and reflection. Um, and that's really like what all of the programs are designed to do. Um, and so like the internship program, Sean, that you were talking about with your, the occupational therapist. Um, and you know, like that was such good information um, because like you said, it's something that you, you know, you know, that's like, you do want to do something um, in the psychology field, but not exactly that one thing. Um, and I had so many experiences like that, too. Um, I, I mentioned that I was also a psych major and really thought I wanted to do research and, um, you know, get a PhD and like developmental psychology um and did a, a summer internship at the university of virginia in their early development lab um where i was working with like really really little kids like three to six years old um and i loved that part but i did i did not like the research part and i was like okay yeah good to know <laughs> um and so but if like if i hadn't done that i could have maybe gone through my entire um, rest of my Bates time, like thinking that that was still what I wanted to do because I hadn't actually like experienced that in real life. And, um, yeah, and I think the job shadow pro the program is just sort of like a micro way to do that too. And, um, like Sean said to like you purposeful work is, um, just really focused on creating equitable experiences. So um, if you don't have the means to go to a job shadow, like we will help you do that. Um, and, you know, if you do have the means, then great. <laughs> like we want to allocate the funds um, in a way that, yeah, it's just, it creates more equity. And so um, I like the opportunity to to travel and, or this year we're, you know, we're doing virtual job shadows, which we're excited about too, because then students are um, going to be able to do even potentially like more um, or, <laughs> you know, access those opportunities with even more ease um, without having to get like reimbursed for receipts and those types of things. So um, now I'm just rambling, but I think that <laughs> I, I'm so, so feel so um, just hopeful about even like in this circumstance, I'm just still so excited to share purposeful work with all of the first years. If, um, thank you three for um, sharing what you just shared because um, 
uh, it's really affirming. And um, and for those for those parents or maybe students on the line who have listened and thought, and right now I know what I want to do, or um, one of the best early conversations I had at Bates is some parents took me aside after a reception and said, we are in with both feet about purposeful work, but can you just tell us that our student will find purpose and a job at the end of this? Um, and I wanna say the answer to that is yes. Um, it's absolutely yes. Um, our, um, our outcomes are great. We go toe to toe with all of our peer institutions um, in terms of our outcomes. Um, and we do ask students, as Rachel said, to once they come in to just hit pause on the, you know, I, here's what I want to do. Here's my linear path to a job at the end of this. Because I'll say I have, I have a junior in high school, um, a son who, and I see the, the pressure on um, academically focused students to need to know in high school what is next always what is next right like what are you taking what are you taking next then where do you where do you go to college what will you study those are really important questions and what we want you to do is to explore at Bates come to Bates know that the end is going to be great um, but that you might not know what is next right now um, and our model is to explore and then reflect on that exploration. What did I like? What didn't I like? What worked well? What played to my strengths? What didn't play to my strengths? Um, and then try something else. So for us, it's an iterative process. Um, and we hope that you'll do that in the classroom. We hope that you'll do that in a job shadow. We hope that you'll do that in, a, in an internship, um, in a campus job, that you're always exploring, reflecting, and testing. Um, because we'll be with you on that first job or that first um, application to graduate school. We might be with you on the second one, but we probably won't be with you when you're an alum on the third one or the fifth one or the seventh one. So while you're at Bates, we want you to develop those skills um, to move through that process. So when you're out, you'll be able to do it on your own and then hopefully reach back to Bates and help some current students as well. Excellent, thank you all so much. I feel like I, I'm learning so much too, um, which is great. So uh, we're getting questions coming in, which is awesome. Thank you all so much. Um, so keep them coming, this is great. Um, and I will just ask the panel um, almost chronologically as these have come in. So first, um, thank you, Lucy. Lucy has asked, can you interact with purposeful work starting in your first year? Um, and I think the short answer to this is yes. And then a longer answer is also, um, I'm wondering if anybody might be able to kind of highlight specifically what are the specific types of programs that a first year student is most likely to interface with um, in the purposeful work scenario um, and what those might look like. So perhaps uh, Rachel or Alan? Yeah, happy to. Um, so pretty much, I would almost say all of our programs they can interact with as a first year. Um, job shadow program, open to first years, um, in purpose for confusion courses, you know, though I think there are, Alan, correct me if I'm wrong, um, over 50 courses at Bates that are purpose for work infused. Um, and so, yeah, so that means there will be, like the professor will have a specific focus on um, relating the work, the academic work of that class um, out to quote, like the real world. Um, so whether that is bringing in a speaker who um, say in, a, um, in a, a developmental psych class, for example, a, um, a school psychologist might come in and, and talk about their experience and their path um, in almost like a round table format. And then the students would have the chance to ask questions of that person. And um, that would happen probably several times throughout the course. And then there's also like a written reflection at the end of um, kind of what you learned in that class and 
how you're going to take that out into the world. So that doesn't even have to like relate to a career path, um, but just like really dissecting the learning and understanding how you can like leverage that um, in the real world. And then, yeah, I'll just briefly talk about some of the other programs. So um, we have like the grad and professional school fair. Um, we have these, uh, this program usually happens during short term, it's called How to Adult. Um, and that is, it's like more targeted towards seniors, but like, I think anyone can benefit. It's um, could be like how to um, cook with a common chef that comes in and does a like demonstration on how to make pad thai. We did that last year. It was really fun. Um, and like how to manage, how to budget, how to manage credit cards, um, how to like find your first apartment, et cetera. Um, we have the Purposeful Work Unplugged program, which is one of my favorites. Um, last year we had the um one of the assistant editors of the new york times um she came to um she came to bates and talked she was an alum um and i'm blanking on her last name her first name is carolyn um and she again like had a it was a big event in commons our dining hall um and upstairs and students could come and she talked about her path and how she you know, evolved and got where she was. And then students have the chance to talk, um, to ask questions and then also like go up and talk to her personally afterwards. It's just like awesome ways to um, get a sense for the types of work that Bates alums have done and make some of those personal connections too. Um, we have spotlight events, which is, um, so for example, we had like a spotlight on environmental careers where five alums from like all different environmental jobs came back to campus and did panels on their work um and similarly like hell had a kind of reception afterwards where students could ask them questions um as well so that's like there's so many <laughs> really i think purposeful work at bates is everywhere you look um there's always something happening also just like our resume and um, and other like cover letter reviews, students can, first year students can meet with a counselor at Purposeful Work their first year. Absolutely. Like we would love to meet with them then, um, even if it's just to like build a relationship and, um, kind of get a sense for their high school experience and what they may be interested in going into college. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, that's a great answer. And then we have a couple more questions. We have a lot of good questions here. Um, and I have a couple questions here that I would like to conflate, actually, so to bring together. Um, and these questions are about how do students get these opportunities for purposeful work? Is it a competitive process? Are students matched? Um, so I think with some of the programs, for example, the purposeful work infused classes Rachel was talking about, you sign up for these classes or you show up at that lecture. Um, it's just a matter of that. But I'm wondering if Sean and Alicia, since you both had um, shadowing experiences or internship experiences, um, and you mentioned this briefly, but I was wondering if you could really go into how did you find, did you find yourself, did you go to the center? Who did you talk to? Um, how did you find this, this opportunity? Um, and maybe Sean, you can kick us off. Yeah, so we have um, this thing called Bates Today, which is like an everyday newsletter that keeps you up to date with everything happening on campus, whether that's the lunch, activities being hosted by clubs, and every um, day there will be a little section talking about what Purposeful Work is doing, such as Purposeful Work drop-in hours, where um, the fellows and other um, staff members will uh, ha allot a certain time in um, one of the buildings on campus, and you can go in and get help with anything um, that you need from cover letters to resumes to looking at internships, um, funding, anything. Um, so for the job shadows, there was um, a, we use a program called Handshake, um, which has all the different internships and job shadow opportunities um, to look at other jobs. And so you, I, I'm a little rough on the dates, but there is, an extended period of time in which you can look at the different job shadows that are being offered. It's happening in the beginning of um, the first semester. 
And so you look at the different ones, you narrow them down to the ones that you want to apply to. I think um, it's a maximum of three that you can apply for. And so you would submit a cover letter, your resume. You would also meet with one of the Purposeful Work fellows so they can help you touch up your resume and your cover letters. And so it's like a really helpful step-by-step -step process. And there are so many, so many different job shadows you can apply to from financing, marketing, business, fashion, um, engineering. There are lots of psychology related ones, working with children, especially, um, and even geographically, there are a lot in California and Boston, a lot local near school, some in Portland, like the ones I did in New Mexico and Maryland, I was really trying to, to you know, travel out somewhere, um, literally all over. Um, the US, um, whether they're with a Bates alum or a Bates parent. And then you apply, you get matched with one um, by one of the Purpose for fellows, they match you with one of the job shadows. And then you basically have from like November, um, when you get your match until I want to say around the end of the year, towards the end of second semester to um, correspond with your host and talk about um, the plans, getting out there. You also have an opportunity within that time to meet with Purposeful Work, talk about what it is that you need to get funded, um, whether that's transportation um, while you're there. Um, the host that I have worked with the two times um, allowed me to stay over at their house, which was an amazing opportunity. Um, it was super nice of them. It's, um, while it is a competitive process, everyone that I've known that has applied has been matched with um, one of their job shadows. People have been matched with one, people have been matched with two or three, and it's the student's responsibility to attend, make sure they're in contact with their hostess. And then once you um, do your job shadow, you basically meet up again with purposeful work um, and you debrief on how it went. And the um, hostess that I had, she's um, hosted lots of Bates students, so it was really good to get her experience on the other side of the programming. But it's a really um, nice and easy process, a very step-by-step -step process of purpose work, again, with the um, drop-in hours or using this program we have called Bates Reach and just setting up a time to meet with them. Um, but like anything you do with purposeful work, it's like, I don't, it's not a handheld process. There's a lot of independence with it, but their availability, there's a lot of transparency in when they're available and how they can help you and how they can be a resource. And then even after you've done your job shadow, you've debriefed with purposeful work, having that connection with the Bates alum and still being able to keep in contact with them. And even if, you know, that job shadow wasn't, you realize that wasn't something that you want to continue doing, just having that experience and having that networking opportunity and to to use that as a foundation to apply again um, the year after, which is what I did. And hopefully, you know, if all things go well to do again my junior and senior year. Um, so my audio actually cut when you asked the question. So do you think you can repeat the question, Audrey? Yeah, sorry about that, Alicia. Um, we were just wondering if you could really, the question was about how do you get these opportunities? Are they competitive? Are you matched? What does it look like? Um, and I was wondering, uh, Sean did a, a good job kind of talking about the shadowing program and all of that, but I was wondering about your own specific process as you were looking for internships um, and how did you get there and get the internship that you did? So I think, um, just to not repeat anything Sean said, I'll talk a little bit about how well-developed Purposeful Work is throughout the entire school. So I think my first year, I was really interested in doing something, but I didn't know what. I didn't know if I wanted it to be an internship, if I wanted to um, pursue summer jobs, things like that. And so I actually went to my student support advisor in the OIE, so the Office of Intercultural Education. And in talking to my student support advisor, as well as current um, bosses I already had on campus, they were really able to connect me further with Purposeful Work. So it was kind of, I definitely, I knew of Purposeful Work, but I didn't go out of my way to get involved. But Purposeful Work works so closely with other faculty members and programs around campus that I was able to get redirected here and kind of work with people I was both comfortable with as well as meet new faces and then hone in on that building a resume and cover letter experience. Um, but I will say, I think with the internship that I was able to get, that was more so due to the infusion program, which I know Rachel and Sean have both talked about. And so with the infusion program, it's just really good to hear about how students are able to apply what we've learned into a real life career field. And so 
I was able to connect with someone kind of on my own time. And so I think purpose work is also a good chance to be able to network. So it's not necessarily a formal way in which we are connecting with people, but I had met members of this organization. I kept their email and I kept in touch. And it was even, even if I didn't want to pursue something um, right there at that moment, I was like, I know this is an organization that is a really good um, at not only what they do, but kind of connecting to my own interests. And so then I applied on Handshake later in that March to this internship program and I was able to work with Purposeful Work Fellows. Um, and they worked with me in really making sure that my cover letter and resume wasn't just good in general, but kind of good for the specific opportunity I was applying for and altering it so that way I made sure that I was looking out for what are these employers looking for and how can I make sure I'm a good fit for this opportunity. And then I did an interview over Zoom by that time. Um, and that was just a really good experience that I was able to get connected to this internship. Excellent. Thank you both so much. Um, so coming up next, I think we have a couple questions. Again, I'm going to kind of, these are great questions, keep them coming in, and I'm going to kind of combine them and, and pull out some really um, important points. So a question that's come in is, how does the Center of Purposeful Work help alumni? Um, and another is, is this program always hosted just by Bates alum? Um, so I was wondering, and maybe Rachel, as an alum, you could kick this off, but how, how, does, how are alums such an important part of Purposeful Work? And does Purposeful Work help alumni as well? Um, and maybe a little bit about that relationship. Yes, um, Purposeful Work is uh, so available to alumni and though even though like we're on campus with students obviously and they have you know uh kind of our first attention um i think like as long as the alums reach out to purposeful work um which they know they can um we will like put a lot of time into um you know making an appointment like um talking on the phone emailing about a, a potential, you know, opportunities. And we still do the resume and cover letter reviews for alums as well. Um, uh, this is just a personal example, but when I graduated in 2018, um, one of our counselors, Amy Jaffe, was kind of the person that, she was my go-to person when I was a student. Um, and I was living in Portland, had an internship at that time in the summer. Um, and she actually reached out to me via email because she also lives in Portland and she was like, hey, you know, I know you're in Portland. Um, do you want to grab coffee and like talk about life? <laughs> um, and this was after like I had already graduated and um, not saying that like everyone will get a or the like the coffee invitation is the norm, but um, I think it is like if you if you have that, if you have a previous relationship and we always say too like even if you had zero interaction with purposeful work as a student, um, we are still here for you in the same, in the same exact way. Um, and so that's just something that is important to us. And we also just launched um, this platform called Bates Bridge. Um, and it is kind of an alumni and student like networking. Um, it's almost like a personalized Bates LinkedIn. So you can only sign up if you're a Bates student or an alum. Um, and so alums, it, it helps alums connect to each other and students connect to alums. Um, and I think it's like I've told all my alum friends about it and they're, <laughs> they're all on there. Um, and, you know, they've been connecting with alums who are like five, 10 years older than us. Um, and then students have gotten the chance to connect with them. And so it's like this really awesome um, and just another way that like purposeful work facilitates those connections, but we're not, um, you know, the, like it's, it's just a way for alumni to connect with each other. So we're like so excited about that. Um, and we also constantly update Bates Bridge with like resources for alums. Um, and we're do, doing a lot of like tweaks and updates to that platform too. Um, and then, sorry, Audrey, what was the second part of the question? Uh, the second part was just about how much of 
I think I was just interested in hearing a little bit about how Art Do alums host all of the programs. Are they all of the people who are involved in Infusion? And just a little bit about that. So, um, no, I think that for in terms of job shadows, I think that program is limited to parents of Bates students um, and alumni. And then in terms of infusion courses, like if a professor, you know, has a colleague or a friend that they want to bring in um, to talk about their career, they can do that. It doesn't have to be a Bates alum. Um, sometimes it is just because the professors will often keep in very close contact with their students who have graduated. Um, but yeah, and then in terms of like some of the spotlights and other times that we bring people to campus, I would say like majority that is parents and alumni. Um, but occasionally, you know, there will be another person like friend of Bates um, also. Alan, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, just to give some demographics. That was great, Rachel. Thank you. Um, so we, we have a really incredible and deep bench of alumni and parents who want to be in touch with current students. Um, and I'll give you a quick example of this. Um, so uh, last year, last summer, 2019, in terms of our internship program, we had um, 114 students who were um, supported by Purposeful Work in summer internships. And those are with alumni, those are with parents, those are with friends of Bates, and sometimes they're with people or organizations that have no affiliation with the college, but who really like our model. Um, and so this year when COVID-19 sort of hit us all and we grabbed our laptops and headed to our kitchen tables um, in the middle of March, the question was, would we be able to have an internship program at all? Um, because people who were internship hosts were also heading to their kitchen tables. So at first we started reaching out to alumni and parents and said, could you, could you think about this? Would, would you be able to host an intern? And slowly people started thinking, I think I could, I think I could, it would need to look different. And so then our goal was, you know, could we get 30 internships, um, over the summer. And then we thought, could we get to 50? Could we get to 70? And we get to 108 um, purposeful work internships, almost all of them virtual this summer, and almost all of them supported by parents and alumni who raise their hands to help. And so for us, in the age of COVID-19, to be within six internships of last year is, I'm still just scratching my head on how we did it. And the answer is because of the incredible Bates network of parents and family members and alumni and friends of Bates who said, yeah, I, even though it's a struggle for me at work right now, I definitely want to support Bates and to support a current Bates student. Um, and the, the, feedback that we're getting on how it went is also just incredible. That could be a whole other um, call is, um, is how well it actually went when in March, we didn't even know if we could pull it off. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, I think that the underlying aspect of all of this too is just the community and how much it supports it through and through. Um, I'd even say Purposeful Work has opened opportunities for staff members, faculty members on campus too, which I just think is incredible um, to be at such a helping community. Someone, people all, all across Bates are so invested in helping each other. Um, so great, so thank you all for what you're saying um, and how you're sharing. So. Uh, coming down to some final questions. So uh, this is a good broad one and whoever I think wa wants to answer this one can unmute. Um, but how does the community engaged learning experience tie in with the Center for Purposeful Work? Um, so I don't know if anyone has had particular thoughts on this and how it so closely engages with hands-on learning um, and so on. I'll take a first crack just at the meta level if that's okay with folks. Um, so this, this question comes up pretty frequently and um, it's hand in glove, the answer, you know, community engaged learning and um, uh, getting to know one's community and the Lewiston community is, 
is an incredibly interesting, dynamic, um, complex community. Um, so we're really lucky, Bates is really lucky to be situated in Lewiston. Um, and our students, I think, are really lucky to have access to Lewiston um, uh, as a place, as a context for, for getting their education. And going back to our model of exploration, reflecting, and testing, Lewiston is a great place to do that. Like, we really um, want students to explore the community. Alicia talked about learning about um, Tree Street Youth, um, which is run by an alum who's really connected to the Harvard Center for um, Community Partnerships and who's really connected to the Center for Purposeful Work um, and provides these incredible opportunities for Bates students to get to know Lewiston. And whether that's through education, whether that's through um, um, immigrant and refugee um, questions and concerns and settlement, um, whether it's through, like it could be through uh, food security or insecurity. Um, there are just many, many ways that we hope students um, will see community engagement as a way to explore, reflect, and test. To uh, add on to that and how it's hand in glove with um, Bates being uniquely located in Lewiston and community engaged uh, the community engaged learning component allows you to understand the local community in the same way purposeful work allows you to understand the greater Bates community and who um, who went to Bates parents that are heavily involved in Bates and how they use their time um, their four years at Bates to interact with the community how courses that they've took, um, engagement that they had with volunteering, help manifest where they are today in their career. And, you know, even though obviously times have changed, when I talk to the Bates parents and or the Bates alum and they're like, oh, it wasn't, that's not how things were set up when I was there, but these are some of the courses I took. I even found out that my, the hostess um, in Maryland, she had the same advisor that I currently have, and this is now 30 years later. And so it was super interesting to kind of have that connection and have things come full circle. And it's really great when you can align, you know, something that you're passionate about. And, you know, like Alicia was talking about how this kind of idea of hope and, you know, in a, an ideal scenario, this is something that I would want to do with my life, how it can become tangible, how it can, we can make it happen at Bates through purposeful work, through community engaged learning, because you're able to see someone who graduated 30 years ago doing something and they have the same resources and you kind of have more resources now, how you can essentially get to where they are or using the same avenues and pathways that they utilize um, at their time at Bates, um, you know, utilizing those same resources. So that's how I would uh, answer that question. Excellent, thank you all so much. Um, so we are drawing to an end of our time here. Um, I'd kind of like to end this conversation just with a, anything else that you folks wanna share. Um, I do have a question here about the percentage of students that are involved with this Purposeful Work program, and it's so widespread. I don't know if you have uh, numbers about how many students at Bates that this, some aspect of it touches. Uh, yeah, I can give a quick cliff note on that, Audrey. So um, the last year was the first class that had purposeful work over all of their four years because in Bates history, it's a relatively um, new initiative. And more than 95% of students had had at least one purposeful work experience over their four years at Bates. And many had, um, I forget what the high number is, but it was like eight or 10 um, um, touch points with purposeful work. So um, we're at that point where it really has seeped into the fabric of the campus. Excellent. Yes, as like a, a recent alum, I graduated in 2017. It's been like so shocking and amazing to see how much it's grown. Um, so thank you to all our panelists. I do wanna say that if you are interested in learning more about the Center for Purposeful Work, please visit the Center for Purposeful Work's website on the, at bates.edu. The easiest way for anybody get, to get to this website is to Google Purposeful Work at Bates College. It'll be one of the first links right there. There's so much to learn there. You can see outcomes there as well. You can see a little bit about where has every different class gone? What are they doing? 
Um, and you can see contact information for our panelists tonight if you have further questions as well. As you learn about Bates College and if it might be the fit for you, everyone at Bates is here to help you. So um, please take advantage of those resources. Um, reach out to our office as well. I know there are a couple questions we haven't made it to, so please be in touch. But thank you all so much for joining us tonight. And then I just want to open it up to our panelists. Is there anything else that you think has been left unsaid that you want to say about purposeful work um, or more wholly about the college? I just wanted to say um, kind of in response to one of the questions about um, how does purposeful work help students if they like switch fields of interest to study? Um, we, I was just like looking at some of the presentations that I've given in the past in purposeful work and there's literally a slide where we have major does not equal career. <laughs> um, so that is like, that's the ideology of purposeful work. Um, and we have so much research. Um, we did a Gallup poll um, last year and students, or sorry, graduates um, are changing jobs now up to 11 times. Um, and a lot of that change happens like between the time that they graduate and the, I think between the time that they're like in their mid thirties. Um, so it's, I think it's really like a misnomer to, to think that um, in this modern day and age that really anyone's major is going to directly lead them into a career, especially like at a liberal arts institution. So with purposeful work, um, really our goal is to help graduates like as they're changing jobs, as they're testing and reflecting, is just to give them the, the confidence um, and the tools to do so. So to really be like flexible, inquisitive, um, yeah, I think we've said this, but like reflection is just a huge, huge, huge part um, of what we emphasize. Um, and really also just value-based in the job choice. So like knowing that maybe what you do right after you graduate is, you know, maybe your values will change in a few years and then you know that you'll be ready to switch jobs. And when that time comes, like because of the Bates education, you're going to be able to do that um, with success. So I think, um, yeah, that, that's that's the last thing that I want to say. <laughs> and I just want to thank um, everyone so much for coming to it. It's really, it's great to be here with you all. And thanks to our students too, Sean and Alicia. Awesome. Well, if that's it, yes, I just want to say one more round of thank you, thank you to everybody who has sat on this panel today. Hearing you all speak has been very re-energizing. Um, and thank you to all of our prospective students and families for attending this session and digging into some of the really exciting aspects of Bates College. And please know, again, that we are all here to help you answer your questions. Every question is a good question. Um, so please reach out um, if there are still things pressing in your mind. Um, but with that, I hope you all have a, an amazing rest of your night or afternoon, depending on where you are. Maybe it's the morning, um, but goodbye.